Hello and welcome. My name is Biagio Mazza, pastoral associate here at St. Sabina Parish in Belton, Missouri, and I'm here to welcome you to another Do You Know series question. Today's question is, do you know how the season of ordinary time fits into our entire liturgical year? In order to understand that, we must look at the liturgical year just briefly. Liturgical year actually is focused around two major festal seasons, namely Christmas and Easter. Uh, Christmas is always preceded by the four Sunday preparation that we know as the season of Advent, and it concludes with the season of the Epiphany, which uh, is the Sunday after Epiphany, which is typically the baptism of the Lord's Sunday. Uh, Ordinary time gets picked up on the evening prayer of the baptism of the Lord feast and continues till it is interrupted by the season of Easter with its preparation time of Lent, 40 days, and with its celebration time of the 50 days from Easter to Pentecost. Um, so. The festal season of Easter actually interrupts the season of ordinary time, uh, the great 90 days of that season, and then ordinary time gets picked up again uh, with evening prayer on the Feast of Pentecost. Um, ordinary time typically ends, continues, and typically ends on the 34th Sunday of the liturgical year which is also known as the Feast of Christ the King. It brings closure to the entire liturgical year uh, before proceeding to the first Sunday of Advent, which begins our new liturgical year. In order for the, uh, sun, uh, for the ordinary time to end on the 34th Sunday of the year, uh, when it gets picked up soon after Pentecost, on the, the evening prayer of Pentecost, what is done is the numbers are the numbered Sundays are ordered in such a way so that the the season ends exactly on the 34th Sunday of the year. And in order for, to accomplish that, what happens is some of the uh, some some of the Sundays in ordinary times are eliminated in order to make sure that the liturgical year ends on the 34th Sunday in ordinary time. Um, now a note about the translation ordinary time. Um, in Latin, the original term uh, that gets translated as ordinary is actually ordinalis. Now, ordinalis in Latin actually means numbered or ordered Sundays, Sundays that follow a particular order. Uh, and so the unfortunate um, part of all this is that when it came into the English translation of it, what we ended up instead of having numbered Sunday or ordinal Sundays, we end up with a word like ordinary time um, or ordinary Sundays. Unfortunately, in English, the term ordinary suggests common, uh, kind of a blondness, uh, um, something that nothing exciting going on. And, and as a result, people think that, well, it's just blah season. Instead, what it should they should be numbered they should be called as numbered Sundays. And the numbered Sundays are an attempt for us to really delve into and deepen our understanding of the two major festal seasons that we have celebrated, Christmas and Easter. Um, and so ordinary time's purpose is an attempt to delve into and deepen our understanding and relationship of Christ and of our relationship uh, as our, our meaning and relationship as disciples of Christ as we explore the, the events of Jesus' life if both at Christmas and at Easter. And so ordinary time becomes that time of reflection and deepening our awareness of what those festal seasons mean to us. So the season of ordinary time is extremely significant and important in our tradition uh, and it continues to help us be people who are immersed in the Paschal mystery that the entire liturgical year celebrates. So I hope this has helped you to have a better sense of what the season of ordinary time is and how it fits into a liturgical year. And I hope that you will come back again to learn more about our liturgical life as well as the many aspects of what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Thank you very much.